Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first 500 people to click on the link in the description below get two months of Skillshare Premium free. So you've been practicing your video making skills for a little while now, and you feel like maybe it's time you started trying to create content for brands. So whether you're here because you were actually looking for this video, or if YouTube just recommended this video to you and you're vaguely interested, I'm going to walk you through my four step approach for creating content for brands and some things you might wanna consider. So step one is to identify what the brand actually needs. Figure out what the brand actually wants to accomplish from creating videos. Is that to drive direct sales? Do they want to increase traffic to another source? Do they want to reach a larger audience and increase brand exposure and awareness? Or do they simply just want to create a personality and a brand image around their company? So to illustrate this, I'm going to show you two videos I shot recently for a brand called Hockey Shot so that we can hopefully get an idea of how different types of videos can accomplish different things. So clearly we have two very different styles of video created for the same brand, but each with a different motive. Video A is a lifestyle piece that has a relatable feel and enhances the brand image while also promoting their product. In the video, we see hockey shot products such as the training aids, the red puck, but most importantly, the synthetic ice tiles. And the whole point of this video is to show that even in the summer during the off season, you can still get your training in by using these products. Now taking a look at video B, we have a totally different concept and what we have here is a behind the scenes look of what goes on at the hockey shot offices. In the video, we actually have two well-known hockey influencers, Pavel Barber and Coach Jeremy, who can be seen working on an IGTV video for hockey shot. And with this little behind the scenes edit, we're aiming to give their audience an exclusive glimpse into the work they're putting in with a fly on the wall sort of vibe. So really the goal with video B was to create a connection between hockey shot and their audience, as well as drive traffic to the other content on their social media, in this case, their IGTV. TV. Now that we have established how each video addresses different needs of the company, let's dive into some of the more technical or creative aspects of content creation for brands. So moving on to step two, we want to figure out where are the videos going to live and on what platform will they be consumed? Now, for example, if a brand says they want the video to be exclusively for Instagram, you could consider shooting sideways so that you can maximize that vertical area on a phone screen. Now, in most cases, the brand will actually want to get the most bang for their buck and have the videos live across multiple platforms. And if that is the case, it's probably better to just shoot in regular 16 by nine. Now it doesn't hurt to keep in mind that if you do plan on putting some of the footage on Instagram, you should leave enough room when you're shooting so that you can vertically crop your videos and post without cutting off a lot of important information. Now this brings us to step three, which is to figure out exactly what gear we need to pull off these videos. So let's start off with video B. Because we are inside an office building, we're probably going to want to bring some sort of lighting. In this case, we were using the Aperture 120D, which also happens to be the same light I use for all of my YouTube videos. Now for this entire sequence, all I used was this Canon 50mm f1.8 lens and a Sigma MC11 adapter so that I could mount the lens on my Sony body. I shot the video completely handheld in a frame rate of 120 frames per second, and by shooting in a high frame rate, I could slow down a lot of the footage and smooth out those handheld movements, giving me the most cinematic results. Now a lot of the time, people will just throw any old lens 
lens onto their camera body without actually considering why they would want to choose a certain focal length. Now I could have used my expensive Zeiss 25mm, but this focal length is simply too wide for this type of shoot. Because we're capturing behind the scenes video, I wanted to use a tighter lens like the 50mm so we could take a step back from the action and really dial in that fly on the wall vibe. Switching things up and looking at video A, our equipment actually does change quite a bit. This time around we're still using the Sony a7 III, only this time we've got it mounted on the Zion Crane Plus gimbal with our Zeiss 25 f2 and the Polar Pro ND8 PL filter. Not only does the wider focal length allow us to get closer to the action, it also introduces more context to our scene, revealing important information about our setting. If the entire video was shot using the same 50mm from video B, the audience may not even notice the fact that our subject is playing hockey on a dock next to the lake because the focal length is tighter and a lot more zoomed in. Now having the setup on the gimbal allows us to get longer moving shots that are still smooth without the need to slow down all of our footage. Now it's also worth noting that I did occasionally throw in some clips using the Zeiss 85mm to create a little bit more variation in our shots. Most of the footage in this video is shot at 4K in 24 frames per second and left at regular speed, while there are a few shots that are in 1080p at 120 frames per second, slowed down to 20%. So that is it for gear, and now we can move on to step four, which is actually creating the video. Consider the audience and the target demographic that a brand wants to appeal to. Now in the case of Hockey Shot, their main demographic, especially on social media, is going to be young teenagers. And that being the case, it makes sense to throw in a bunch of cool effects and overlays and transitions that will get their attention and keep the video interesting for them. However, if let's say the brand you're creating for is a mortgage broker, you'll probably want want to reconsider this editing style and stick to something more reserved and professional. Now another important thing to remember is that if you're making videos for social media, it's critical that you keep your videos short. Most people have a short attention span and don't want to watch long videos, and I think Instagram in fact does limit their videos to 59 seconds. So before you start filming and editing, make sure that the brand understands this and you're on the same page so that you can pack all of the best shots into a short, concise video. Now during the creative process, don't be afraid to give your input and apply some of your own vision and creative style. After all, the whole reason the company chose you to make their video is because they like your style, so use that to your advantage, and also give your subject some direction when you're filming them, because after all, you're not just a videographer, you're also a director. So I get asked constantly where I learned to make videos and if I went to film school, and the truth is I actually never went to film school, and pretty much everything I know about filmmaking and social media is picked up over the years through lots of online content. And I actually just finished watching this incredible course from Mark Sersosimo on Skillshare. Mark talks about creating professional videos with tools you already own, highlighting the entire creative process from planning all the way to the final product. Now if you're not already familiar with Skillshare, it's essentially an online learning community for creators with thousands of creative, business, technology, and lifestyle classes. With their premium membership, you get unlimited access to high quality classes from experts who cover topics such as shooting vlogs, wedding films, documentaries, and low-budget filmmaking, all for less than $10 a month. And the first 500 people to click the link down in the description will get two months of Skillshare Premium free. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at daniel.schiffer. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.